We're diving back into SharePoint Premium in this video and going into another cool feature. This one's gonna be taxonomy tagging, and this is gonna be a big, big time saver. Everyone hates filling out metadata in SharePoint. It doesn't matter if you're an admin or an end user, we all hate it, it's time consuming, it's boring, we'd rather be doing other things, and this tool is gonna let you do it. Instead, you're going to be able to do whatever you want. Go get another cup of coffee. You're going to be able to drag and drop files straight into a library and let AI handle the rest. It'll do your managed metadata for you. Let's jump in and see how this thing is set up and see it in action. So to start with, we're going to be in the M365 Admin Center. We're going to go to the Setup button, scroll all the way down until you see Use Content AI with Microsoft Syntax. This is the option we want. At some point, it's going to be rebranded to SharePoint Premium. I'm sure of it because they're trying to get away from those old names, but it takes a little bit of time to do all that. So by the time you're watching this video, it may already be rebranded, but you should know this is basically what you're looking for anyway. So once we click on this, if you haven't configured anything with SharePoint Premium yet, any of these AI features, you'll, you'll need to set up your billing first because these features will cost money per transaction, generally is how it's billed, but it's a very small cost and especially compared to the amount of cost of doing this work manually. Uh, paying someone to do this costs a whole lot more than just letting AI do it for you. So you'll set up billing, you'll pick your Azure subscription, your resource group, and the region where this processing should take place. Once you've done that, you'll be able to see this Manage Microsoft Syntax button light up. So you'll be able to pick that and see all the various features that are available. So in this case, we're doing taxonomy tagging. So we're going to click on this and you want to double check what this setting is. And actually, I would say you want to double check what all of these are set to once you set up your billing to make sure if there's a feature you don't want enabled that you could disable that. For instance, document translation, uh, we could set this to no sites that will disable translation on everything. So if you don't want a feature available to users, make sure everything is turned off so you don't get billed for it. But taxonomy tagging, we're going to be turning this on and I'm going to be setting it to a selected site. Now, I've got a site already set up to hold this. The, uh, I'm going to be using contracts in this example because I want to be able to store contracts for various clients and have, their, have the client name automatically populated based on what's inside this document. So what I'm going to do is select selected sites and I'm going to pick my sales site. It's, there's a nice feature here that will let you search for it. So you don't have to like have the URL copied into your clipboard or anything. You can also upload a CSV file with your different sites. And this is what I would recommend long term. And here's why. Once I hit save here, if I want to add another site, notice the wording here. It says replace current site list by selecting new sites. So if I add in a second site here, if I don't specify that sales site that I just added, it gets rid of the sales site. So it turns off the functionality on that site. What I would have to do is specify the sales site and this new site or however many new sites I want this to be added to. That's what I've got to do with this particular thing. So it's a little bit odd how the behavior is, which is why I say what you should be doing is uh, in the future, after you're, after you're done with your first site, use this download current site list button to download the CSV, add in all whatever sites you want and upload the entire thing. That way you're always adding new things or deleting old things, but it's more intentional and not accidental, uh, which is what I see happening with this type of an interface. But I've got my site added. We are done at this point in the admin center. We can close this tab out. Let's go straight to the sales page. And what we're going to do is go into our contracts library. This is a brand new library. Obviously, it's a brand new uh, team site because there's really no content in here. But what we need to do is we've got our blank library. You would obviously add in whatever metadata columns you want that may be uh, manually maintained. But for your automated columns, then you can have up to three per library with this taxonomy tagging system. We're going to go to create a new column or you could use an existing column for this, but I'm going to create a new managed metadata column. 
and I'm going to call this client. Type will be manage metadata. We'll pick the term set. And that is my client term set under the business tags term group. And you'll see the option here. This is the new stuff. This is what the taxonomy tagging is. It lets you automatically tag documents with terms. Now, the keyword there is terms because it's going to be looking in that term set, in that client's term set, to see which client names match content within your document. At least that's the use case I'm using it for. Regardless of what your use case is, it's gonna be looking for terms matching content in the document. So we're gonna leave this as yes. We're gonna enable this feature. Let's look down through some of the other options in here. We can specify just the term only, which is what I'm going to do, but you could also do the parents. So maybe uh, in the example here, uh, they're using Sydney. So if you wanted the terms plus parent, it might be Sydney, Australia, uh, you know, and so on. So uh, the, the hierarchy. Uh, so sometimes that is useful if you want to be able to filter down to geographical regions or uh, deal with more hierarchical type scenarios where you've got a lot of term sets kind of nested within each other. We could allow multiple values. In this case, I want a contract to deal with a particular client. I'm going to turn this one off. And I don't want to do the, 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 the required. I don't want to require this field because we're going to have AI do this. I'm not going to be too worried about whether this contains data, but we definitely don't want the user to have to put in a value because that defeats the whole purpose of using AI. But from here, I'm going to click on save. Now, in a production scenario, you're going to want a content type to do all of this. You don't want to just add things the way I'm doing it, but I've covered content types. Uh, I think I've beaten that topic to death. You can find a lot of videos uh, on my channel about making content types, using content type publishing, the whole nine yards. So I'm going to skip that part so I won't bore you to death with it. Uh, I'm going to drag this client column over here so that we can see it a little bit better. But now this is all ready to use. What we need to do now is drop some files onto this library and let's see this thing in action. So let's get files copied in here. All right, we've got files in here. Uh, you notice that with the file names, I've got sample client names in here, but then I've got one where I've forgotten to put the name and that was intentional because I want you to see that this is not really coming from the file name, it's coming from the contents. Um, it's probably looking at maybe everything. It could be looking at everything, but I wanted to make it clear that the, the document body, the contents, is what AI is going to be really looking at to determine which, uh, which documents match up with which term sets or which terms. So let's give this a minute and we'll check back in. And while we're waiting on that, if this is the kind of content that you like, you like SharePoint Premium, you like SharePoint, you're trying to learn everything you can and improve your skill set, please click on that subscribe button and like this video. That helps me out a lot. It lets the algorithm know that this content is valuable to you. And leave me a comment down below with what you think of SharePoint Premium, if you've even heard of this before, or which particular features you wanna see. And I will organize my, my schedule to make sure that you get those videos first. And while we're waiting on this, I also want to touch a little bit on the cost associated with this. Now, this doesn't require a license. There is going to be a license associated with SharePoint Premium, but it's more about the SharePoint Advanced Management feature. So it's a subset of SharePoint Premium that will need a per user license. This, along with, uh, I believe, all the other AI-based features like the document translation that I covered already, those are going to be like a pay-as-you-go feature. So as you need that feature uh, and use it, you'll be charged that little bit of money per transaction. So with this, every document that is analyzed and the, the metadata is extracted into these columns as we're doing here, each document will count as one transaction, whether you're using it to fill in one column or all three columns that you can use with this. So on one hand, it does make it easy. You don't have to assign a license to all the users who are going to be uploading documents in this case. But on the other hand, you do want to keep in mind that this is going to be transaction based. There is going to be a variable cost there associated with how much this is used. 
it is going to save a tremendous amount of time because people won't have to fill in this stuff. And it's, I believe it's going to be a lot more accurate or at least as accurate as a human because we're comparing the document uh, body with a fixed set of metadata fields. So I think that that's going to be a very powerful way to quickly categorize uh, items and associate them with the metadata that you need to organize them by. Now, as far as the time that it takes for the AI to analyze these documents and populate the, the metadata fields, Microsoft says it's a minimum of 20 minutes and a maximum of 24 hours. So it will take a bit of time. I've found that it sometimes will happen really, really quickly within maybe a few minutes. Uh, maybe that is dependent on whether you're setting up a brand new library and some things have to kind of get in, in place for that library versus a library where you've already got your taxonomy tagging configured and you're just adding new documents. And it's already done. You notice that uh, Elevate was already associated with the correct client, Apex, Blue Wave, same thing. And then the new service agreement, it says Ascend Analytics. And if we go into this document, we'll see that this was with Ascend Analytics. Very, very cool feature, very handy. One other thing I wanted to point out is if we go into the details for this, you'll see that uh, the client field has a little information bubble next to it. And if we click on it, it'll mention that this may have been tagged or auto auto tagged with terms based on the contents of the document at the time it was added to the library. So once this has been populated, you are able to change this. This just kind of helps you out, fill in a lot of stuff. If there's a mistake, you still have room to, to change this. Uh, so it's not like the, uh, the auto tagging is gonna undo any correction that you made. So that is a very nice feature. So let me know in the comments below, is this something you think you could use in your organization? Are there certain departments that have major tagging type features like this, where th these are organizational terms, maybe it's client list, maybe it's department list, some other type of uh, managed metadata information that needs to get auto populated, where you can leverage something like this. You know, like I said, there, there's going to be a small cost to this. And uh, I'm not listing the price here. It's small, but you could look that up. I don't want this to get out of date if they change the pricing structure or anything like that. So look that up to see what it is at the time you're watching this video if you're interested in this feature. And let me know if you think this is gonna be valuable. I think it's gonna save a lot of time, improve accuracy, and keep people more productive, doing more important things than categorizing or tagging documents. I'm going to keep covering these features in SharePoint Premium, like the document translation, which I've already covered. And if you're interested in how that works, uh, because I think it's really cool, then click into this video to learn more about that whole process, because it was really fun to make and has a lot of possibilities. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.